Welcome to Financial Education for the Nation. I'm here with the lovely Paul today, and the sky is blue. I can see a plane flying through the sky with its trail behind it, and the sun is shining. It's a bit frosty out there, but um, I'm looking forward to speaking to you today, Paul. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Warren. You well? I'm very good, thank you. Very good. Yeah, looking forward to today's conversation. It's slightly yeah. different than normal, so... Yeah, so we're going to be warming people up out of the chill with a, a, a focus back on the children today and, and specifically saving for your kids in, in a, a few different ways. And I think you, you've mentioned to me in the past, this isn't really spoken about too much when we're, when we're really pushing forward to, let's say, pensions for kids. Yeah. But this all comes down to what Albert Einstein, I think it was, called the eighth wonder of the world, our friend's compound interest. He um, understands so, it, earns it, he who doesn't pays it. And that's the full quote from Einstein. The Einstein quoted, compound interest should be the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it, he who doesn't pays it. And let's face it, how many of us really understand compound interest? Not, not many, I don't think. So hopefully you can, uh, you can, you can shed a little light for, for, for most of us on, on the subject. Yeah. So it's not going to be a mathematical one, but I want to cover compound interesting broadly in terms of why it's important and how it works. And then we're going to come on to the benefits of using it for you and your future, and particularly your children. Okay. Okay, great. So compound interest basically is when you receive interest. So interest is an investment return on the original capital and the interest that you've earned already. So if I give you an example, if you have a hundred pounds and it grows at 10%, at the end of the period you'll have 110 pounds. Now, if that grows simply, every year you'll get another 10, 10%. So another 10, 10 pounds on the 100 pounds, 100 pounds, 110, 120, 130. But the way compounding works is exponentially. So it, that simply means is 100 pound goes to 110, 110, you now get 10% on that. So it's 11 pounds, so 121 pounds. And now we get 10% on that, which is just over 12 pounds, gets added to that. So the growth of your money grows exponentially. Can I say that right today? Exponentially. <laughs> um, so it's not growing in a linear fashion. It's growing. And over time, and it's time which is the key here, you really benefit from it. Now, the challenge we've got in today's society is we live in an instant gratification society. You know, I remember the days when I used to have to either walk or get in my car and go to the video shop browse all the videos on the shelf, choose the one I wanted, go to the checkout, pay for it, and then travel home. My kids don't know they're born. They flick through Netflix, iTunes, pick the one they want, and it's streaming within seconds. They've not even left the lounge. So with all that kind of thing, buying cars instantly just on finance, buying things instantly as quickly as you can, takes us away from the patience. And I think in life, Things that we wait for and we earn, we appreciate more. And this goes for things like investing and using compound growth to grow your investments over time. Before we start talking about our kids and investing, there's one real key thing that I want to raise. There is a reason why when you get on a plane, they tell you to put your own face mask on before securing that of your children. It's not because they love you more or you can earn more money than your children. Is because you need to secure your own future before you secure your children's, okay? And I use a, a little sort of saying, now, then, them. So we look after the now, we get our finances sorted now, we sort our emergency cash, pay our debts down, we sort the now. We then sort our then. So in other words, we sort our future money out. So we sort our own retirement out. The only then, when we've done those two things, we look at them, other people. And I'm talking about gifting money away, securing the retirement for our children and other things. But you've got to do it in that order because otherwise, if you haven't sorted your own shit out, if you haven't sorted your own retirement out, you're going to be a financial burden on your children and that's not what you want or what they all want. Okay, okay so, so can you, can you, you said it's not, it's not about the maths, but can you bring it to light a little bit? Do you have examples of how this builds up over time you using a figure out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, definitely. But let me just go back. Let me just explain. What, what a lot of people don't appreciate is that anyone, anybody from a newborn baby up to someone in their 60s can have a pension. 
Okay, most people think of pensions as something you only get through the workplace or through the state, through the state pension. But if you are um, expecting your new baby now, and a friend of ours just expecting their baby, remember, they can have a set up a pension. As soon as that baby's born, they can set a pension up. They can set a pension up for a newborn baby and pay into it, obviously, on behalf of that newborn baby. So from age one day, all the way through until you decide to retire, you can set up a personal pension. Now, the amount of money you can pay into these pensions will vary. It will vary on diff lots of different factors, but keep things really, really simple. It's 100% of what you earn, up to a maximum of 40,000, or 3,600 pounds a year. Okay, so for a new newborn baby, 3,600 pounds a year is a lot of money. You know, we're talking 300 pounds a month. So there's a lot of money you can go into pensions, and a lot of people don't appreciate that it can be for newborn babies all the way up for people who are retiring. Okay? okay, And the way magic of compounding works with the pension is you can't access the pension until you retire. So if we start a pension up for a, uh, a newborn baby now, that newborn baby can't access it, with, access it when they're 18, they want a new car, or 25 when they want a house deposit, or later on in life, they have to wait until they retire before they can access it. In the retirement age, at the moment it's 55, but it's going up to 57 and 58. So it's, it's increasing. It's going to be 10 years below the state retirement age, basically. So that's good news, though. And that's good news because if you look back on your own life since you sort of first got together with your partner, how many demands were there on your money? How many times would it have been easy to dip into that savings account? And how many of us did dip into that savings account to pay for something? It could have been we had a stressful day at work and we wanted a holiday. It could have been that um, we owed some tax we wasn't expecting and we dipped in. But if the money wasn't there to dip into, we would have found a way. And that's why a pension is great because it protects this money for the time when you need it most, when you are too tired to continue working and you need to fall back on your savings and your investments. Okay, so what, what do we use then? I mean, uh... Pensions for, for newborn babies and, and young children, where, where do you set those up? Okay, plenty of places online. So most stakeholder pensions, a stakeholder pension is a personal pension plan, and most stakeholder pensions will allow contributions for newborn babies. Most personal pension plans will allow contributions for newborn babies. So there's plenty of places available online. Um, if you've got a little bit more money you want to set aside, uh, and I say that because um, we have Lexo, which is my own platform, that takes anything from £20,000 upwards. So not su not suitable just for newborn babies, but if you have your own investments with us, then you can also use that uh, for your children's pension as well. Okay, and so so yeah, bring it to life a little bit then. What what sure. sort of numbers might we be talking about here? Okay, let, let, let's bring it to life. Let's look at some figures, let's some maths. Okay, if you had saved, or if you decide to save fifty pounds a month, okay, from the child's birth until age twenty five. And we have that money grow at 7% a year. Now, bear in mind, the world stock market's average just over nine. So we're taking a bit off. We're just saying it's going to grow at 7% a year. So from birth to 25, 50 pounds a month, you've put in there 15,000 pounds. Would you have a guess on how much might be in there, Paul, when they get to retirement? Would you like to guess? I, I don't pretend to understand compound interest in any way at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let, let's say maybe it doubles. I don't know. Okay. So we've only put in 15,000 pounds. Okay, that fifteen thousand pounds when they get re to retirement would be worth one million pounds. Wow. Okay, so fifty pounds a month going in for twenty-five years, we'd say fifteen thousand pounds. That fifteen thousand pounds turns into one million pounds when they get to retirement. No more contributions from twenty-five all the way through to retirement. Retirement, I think I've shown is about sixty-seven or sixty-eight. Okay, so no more contribution for that period of time. That's the power of con uh, compound interest. And remember, your newborn baby is going to go into the workplace. And all employers now have to provide a workplace pension and pay into it. So they're going to have this money plus the money that their employer is going to give. It sorts their retirement out. Now, let me give you a comparison here. Let me give you a flip side. If you don't do this, like most of us, if you don't do this and you wait until you're in your 40s before you think, actually, I probably should start taking retirement seriously. I probably should start putting some money away. 
how much money do you think you need to put away in your pension from 40 to 65, so the same 25 year period, to get a million pounds? Have a little guess for me. Well, it must be a lot more because that's a lot of years missing off it. That's, that's 40 years missing off it compared to our first example. Yeah, about 20 times more. So nearly a thousand pounds a month. So from 40 to 65, you need to put a thousand pounds away. It's actually 922 pounds a month. Okay. 922 pounds a month for 25 years. So you're paying in 276,000 pounds as opposed to the 15,000 pounds. Okay. Yeah. So massive difference, massive difference. And the thing behind this is that real clever guy called Einstein said it's the eighth wonder of the world. It's just compound interest. Okay. We could even term it Einstein's money. You know, it's just the bonus on top of our own money. So from newborn baby to 25, leave it till retirement, say 67, 68. You're looking at a million pounds saved up if you just put in 50. But if we don't do that and we leave it until we're, um, say, in our 40s and we want to retire at 65, we're looking at 20 times as much, £922 a month. Massive. Okay, okay. so it really highlights, as, as you say, on, on our own pensions as well, mm. I think your phrase is the, uh, the, the best time to start was... was Yesterday. Yeah, the yeah. next best time is today. Today, yeah, absolutely. Don't let another day go by. Now, the icing on the cake... Even newborn babies get tax free from the government. Okay, so they don't pay tax, they'd never pay tax. And in fact, they might not ever pay tax. This possibility, yet they still get tax free. Okay, so that 50 pounds is only costing them 40 pounds. So if you want 50 pounds invested in the pension, you only have to put in 40 pounds as a contribution. That's 10 pounds a week. Now, how many grandparents give pocket money to their children? And where does that pocket money go? On sweets, this, that, and the other. Things that they're gonna forget in six months time, no about a year's time. What a great idea if we can start redirecting that um, into a pension. Or maybe, would you give your children back if they took away child benefit? You know, if they stop paying child benefit, would you say, okay, I can't afford the child anymore, you better take them back? <laughs> Why don't we use the child benefit to contribute towards this? You know, these are little small things that you can tweak that won't make a massive difference in your day-to-day -day finances, but will make a huge difference towards your child's future. And as my wife termed it, the legacy that you're leaving for your children. You know, yeah. when you pass away, you've left a gift that they can't waste and they will get when they retire. So it's a fantastic opportunity for you to really you know, make a difference for your children's long-term future long before you're not around. The probability is you won't be around when they draw this money, but they're sure gonna remember you when they start spending it because they didn't put into it, you did. Okay, great. Well, I think that's a, yeah, I mean, those numbers are a, a perfect highlight of, of why this is something to consider again. If you're in a position where you're financially stable and, and your future is secured, then yeah, I mean, those figures are pretty, pretty startling. So, Go on. I was just going to jump in. You hit a point on there, you know, if your finances is loud, and I completely hear that. Remember the acronym, you know, let's sort our own finances out for now, for our own future, and then for them. So if you can't do the £40 and you can only do 10 there's a lot of people out there without a quarter of a million pounds of pension money. You know, they're, you know, so something is better than nothing. And if you choose a stakeholder pension, the charges are capped at 1.5% for the first 10 years. It doesn't matter if you put in... Uh, 20 pounds or 50 pounds for charges are proportionate. So it still makes a big difference for your children's future. Okay, great. All right. So let's pull it back a little bit then because that's pensions and that's a bit separate. And as you said, once that starts, the money is locked away, it's protected. Nobody's getting that for, for a long time. So what about the other stages in life? So you, you already picked up on some of them, the, the car age 17, 18, the house age, whatever, whatever. Yeah a wedding, which is crazy expensive these days. What about saving for some of those life events for our kids? Yeah, so a pension wouldn't be the right vehicle, the right wrapper for those events. And I want to drill down into the details of these at a future episode, okay? So I want to keep, keep on to pensions here. But typically thinking, when you get to sort of say age 18 or so, you're going to have potential university fees, okay? University fees are generally going to vary for each individual, but we're looking whether they stay away from home or, or um, stay at home. You're looking around about £10,000 a year for um, education costs and equipment. 
and you're looking at around about twelve thousand pounds a year um, for accommodation. So over just a three-year degree, you're looking at about sixty-six thousand pounds. So massive sums of money. Um, and then house deposit again, it's going to depend on the value of the house in which they buy everything else. But if you want to help your children on the housing ladder, you wouldn't be far fetched from sort of between twenty and forty thousand pounds of money needed there. Um, and then the third big expense that um, parents generally face are wedding expenses. You know, are we going to contribute towards these wedding expenses? And I'll drill down the actual sums that are futurist issues. So you've got the actual amounts that you need to put in um, and also the wrappers you can. But that's a different approach. That's different because it's more shorter term, depending on your age or children. But definitely the eight hundred world works again. The sooner you start, the less it's going to cost you. Okay, so principles remain the same. It's just the, the wrap of the vehicle you use is, is yeah. different because you can't lock yeah. the money on. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, how's that been? Is that good? Yeah, really good, thanks. Yeah, uh, lots of food for thought for the parents and carers out there, for sure. Yeah, it is. I think it's really important for people to consider that actually if I can do a little bit, make it automatic, pay it from the bills account, automate the payment, Globally diversify to a world stock market fund, maybe the, the a world index tracker fund, stakeholder, like a very low cost, cheap, as it were, pension scheme. Put the money amount away regularly, automated, pound cost averaging over 25 years, a small amount makes a huge difference um, ultimately. And it's a great legacy to leave your children. Yeah, great. All right. Well, no wonder Albert was so impressed by it. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Cheers.